രഞ്ജിത് കുന്ദൻ സിഇഒ കോ ഫൗണ്ടർ ഡിജിറ്റൽ ഫസ്റ്റ് കാർബൺ എഫിഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഡെയറി വാല്യൂ ചെയ്യും to solve for productivity quality and traceability in a digital fashion we are a deep tech company trying to solve for productivity quality and traceability in the dairy you know value chain uh, it's a quite a you know massive uh, value chain Uh, 7.6% of our gdp is dairy if you take the pre harvest and post harvest of dairy so we at celabs have taken a sort of a full stack approach to solving for productivity quality and traceability why these three metric because uh, there's a lot of scope for improvement uh, in productivity quality and traceability compared to the global you know standards and hence we have taken a you know full stack approach what do you mean by full stack approach um layer 1 um the bottommost layer the foundational layer is um, technology right so uh, me and my co-founders we come from a deep tech you know background so the idea is tech has to be the foundational layer because that helps us solve problems at scale uh, solve problem very quickly rather than the brick and mortar way so the layer 1 or the foundational block is the technology uh the layer 2 is a carbon efficient dairy value chain that feeds off the foundational block so in this carbon efficient uh, dairy value chain we um help fmcg companies cpg companies uh, d2c companies direct to consumer companies launch their own private label dairy products so if anyone wants to launch their own private label paneer dahi ghee kova chas any of these products we help them do that so it's a b2b uh, you know approach so unilever is a customer itc is a customer zepto is a customer id fresh is a customer in that layer the next layer the layer 3 is about we get a, layer, a lot of data being a digital first company having a lot of these um, farmers on our platform we get a lot of data using that data we try to solve for uh, providing input services for these farmers uh, farmers don't get access to working capital and term loans very easily how can we help underwrite their credit risk farmers don't get access to insurance that easily uh, you know very competitive at competitive prices right competitive price so we try to use our data to solve for their insurance problems using the data that we get you know from the farmers and farmers do need access to multiple inputs not just uh, dairy inputs they need access to they have a small agricultural plot they need access to fertilizers fungicides and many other inputs so that our idea is with the farmers we should not just have a trading relationship we should the farmer should feel that he is uh, gainfully employed on a platform as part of a larger institution and for that that's layer 3 we call it as farmer input uh, you know services and we have deployed this full stack in about 42000 villages in india uh, across 17 states we've been at it for about 14 years uh, you know now uh, we have about 3.5 million farmers on our platform and uh, the idea is to go more deeper with these farmer cohorts so that at the, at the end of the day how are we able to help farmers shift orbits from being a small holder hobby style backyard farmer to be a more entrepreneurial farmer using a combination of what i just mentioned technology data analytics and market linkages that's essentially what we do uh, and the scale at which we operate we see stellabs as a player operating at the intersection of technology and nutrition right in nutrition we have picked dairy value chain as the first use case uh, because in india dairy is probably the uh, biggest per capita uh, nutritional component in india right uh, our consumers 1.5 billion people uh, we consume milk in multiple forms right from gulab jamun to paneer to lassi to chas everything has in the milk so we play in this broader dairy value chain um and trying to solve for productivity quality and traceability and hopefully we could extend this to other nutritional value chains going forward but today we are broadly focused on uh, you know the dairy value chain it's quite a massive value chain to give you a sense about 80 million small holder farming families right produce uh, you know milk 
right? And to feed the 1.5 billion people. So it's almost like the size of the US population, you know, producing milk to feed 1.5 billion people for its daily need of nutrition and protein. Uh, the per capita consumption is about 440 grams per capita per day. So if you take egg, chicken, meat, rice, roti, chapati, milk probably stands out as the single biggest nutritional component. Everything else would be below 440 grams per capita per day. Right? So it's the single biggest nutritional uh, you know, component. And the interesting part is more than half the population right, do not consume fish or meat. And for them, milk becomes the single biggest important source of protein vis-a-vis -vis any other you know, source. Uh, so 80 million smallholder farming families, uh, 450 grams, 440 grams per capita consumption, 1.5 billion people. Uh, we collect milk, uh, India collect milks from about um, 400,000 villages uh, in India. And uh, we have about 100,000 chilling points. Milk is probably the most perishable crop on the planet if you consider it as a, if you consider it as the, as a crop. So if you consider milk as a crop, not only is it the largest crop on the planet, it's also the most perishable. So it's a pretty uh, interesting problem to solve from a technology perspective, right? Huge scale, high perishability, very important uh, that we have, you know, cold chain in it. And India is probably the largest producer of milk globally, right? Thanks to some pioneering work done by the cooperatives, Amul, the Nandini, uh, Comfed, Sudha Milk of the World, we are probably the biggest. So we have tried to stand on the shoulders of these giants and build the next step, which is solve for quality, solve for traceability, because these large giants have solved for the basic problem, which is the quantitative sufficiency of the problem. Uh, I remember as kids standing in line, you know, going to a milk booth and, you know, buying milk. But today that problem is, you know, completely solved. Uh, now the problem is one of, uh, you know, quality, traceability, exports, better products, and, you know, all of that, right? We have about 600, you know, million liters of milk per day that is produced in India, 600 million liters, right? About 25% of that is unorganized, 75% is still unorganized, right? Which means only 25% have organized um, market linkages. And we have about 300 million cattle, right? That's you know, quite massive, right? So 80 million smallholder farming, farming families, uh, 300 million cattle, 1.4 billion consumers, 600 million liters of milk per day, of which 25% is in the organized sector. And over the next, uh, you know, 10 to 15 years, 20 years, if we go by what the government is aspiring, this 25% should become, you know, 50 to 70%. So that's a huge climb. We, we have taken 70 years to go from zero to 25%, but over the next couple of decades, can you, you know, sort of increase it, you know, many, you know, fold. So that's the sheer, you know, size of the uh, sector. A um, lot of opportunities here because being highly fragmented, there's a lot that tech can do. How do you, uh, you know, measure for quality adulteration contamination using spectral analyzers, for example? How do you make sure that there's dynamic traceability built in? How do you ensure that this milk is export grade? Today, a lot of our exports goes to the SARC countries, right? But how can we, uh, you know, shore up our quality by several orbits so that we can also ship it to uh, the United Kingdom, the Europe, and the US and all of it, right? So from a food security perspective, how can we, you know, play a you know pioneering role? Um, so a lot of scope in terms of innovations on the product side. Why is India not having too many milk puddings, caramelized milk puddings type of products that Japan has, for example, right? Um, why isn't that uh, we are not able to solve for uh, dynamic traceability so that you can comfortably give the milk uh, in any form to your kids at home? Right. Uh, the source, uh, these are all opportunities that we can solve for, given the sheer massive, uh, you know, nature of this problem. And finally, which is something now people are now slowly waking up to, um, dairy also happens to be a very um, highly carbon polluting segment, but there are ways to mitigate it. Right. To give you a sense, in India we produce about a total uh, carbon emissions of probably about fifty-seven to sixty thousand million metric tons of carbon. Per year, out of which about 18% is agri, right? In agri, 80% of that emission, which is about 1000 million metric ton, is from dairy. If we are able to apply all the tech that I just briefly mentioned about, if we're able to build in traceability, if we're able to sort of solve for productivity quality, you can actually bring down this emission from about 1000 million metric ton to about 300 million metric ton in a very quick time, right? So you can actually cut down the emissions by two thirds. So that we're also not only procuring high quality milk, selling high quality products, but also doing it in a very carbon efficient manner. 
So be it from a carbon uh, you know, perspective, be it from technology perspective, you know, be it from supply perspective, huge amount of uh, opportunities, especially because the government is very supportive of uh, you know, supporting the segment to ensure that more than from the current 25% organized to move to you know, more than 75% being organized for the next couple of decades. So to make this happen, I think all the players and all of the entities that I just mentioned has to come together to be able to solve it over the next couple of decades and you know, build on top of what we already achieved over the last 70 years. One of the things that we are attempting to do is can we make India the, you know, the football you know, for the world, right? Can we be the, the protein uh, epicenter and solve for the food security for the rest of the world? Right? As I mentioned, with 600 million cattle, uh, 300 million cattle and 600 million liters of milk per day. We are the largest producer of milk uh, you know, globally, right? But being a largest producer is one thing, but to sort of leverage that to get into the export market, which is very doable, that's another thing. For example, we are working with Danone in Morocco to help them digitize their meat supply chain in Morocco, right? Uh, so can we uh, replicate this India blueprint um, globally? Uh, be it in Southeast Asia, which is a milk deficit region, be it in Africa, be it in Europe, can we replicate this uh, tech stack that we have built for the dairy value chain in India, um, you know, globally, that's one. And second, the Indian diaspora living abroad is a huge diaspora, right? And uh, can we take some of these products to not only meet the Indian diaspora needs, it could be like the desi cow ghee or it could be the protein rich paneer, but also to the Westerners who are now uh, you know, pretty keen on you know experimenting, exploring some of these products which are predominantly Indian in nature. Right? It could be the cottage cheese, which we call as paneer in India. It could be the great Indian sweets, which 40-60% of them is uh, the milk-based products. So how do we take some of these you know good quality products, not only to the Indian diaspora that live abroad, but also to uh, the rest of the uh, you know the population in Southeast Asia, in Europe, in US and others. Right? So that's one where I think the uh, government also can play a more uh, affirmative role in saying how do you spur more exports, uh, what support can be given, how do you sort of incentivize people uh, to get to uh, you know step up their exports on the milk side. Mm, while that is one, at an overarching level, um, one of the things that I've noticed over the last 14 years is that most of the, the government support teams seem to be directed towards the cooperatives. Uh, right. I think they need to also start directing a lot of those levers for the private milk industry as well. Uh, by cooperatives, I mean people like Nandini, uh, Amul and all of them, right? But there are good private players. Apart from us, under the Mumak brand, there are players like Hudson, Heritage and all of them. Can, we, can the government now take a little more um, broader view and not provide some of the support only to the cooperatives, but also provide the support to the private players because private players tend to grow faster uh, they're more, um, you know, more aligned with the free market forces and all of that, right? That's, that's sort of one. And the second, when we started uh, 14 years ago, uh, again, the cooperatives have done a uh, you know, phenomenal work in solving for the quantitative sufficiency part of the problem. Thanks to their efforts, you know, more than 25% of the 600 million liters of milk is in the organized sector. So their focus, and quite rightfully so, when they started was to solve for the quantitative sufficiency part of the problem, right? But now the time has come to also solve for the productivity part of the problem. How do you ensure that the farmers are able to produce more milk? How do you ensure that the yield per cow can go up? The Indian animal genetics are quite decent. It's not like that bad, but we still produce only about three to four liters of milk per day, right, in a farm and per animal. How do you increase it manifold? How do you generate at least 100 liters of milk per farm with, you know, four to five animals? That's very doable. We have enough genetic potential in our animals, but you need some more the focus to shift from, uh, you know, moving milk from organized, unorganized to organized to improving productivity, right? So that's something where the government can focus on how to improve productivity, which automatically has a bearing on bringing down the carbon footprints as well, because you need now fewer number of animals to produce the same amount of, uh, you know, milk. That's uh, something that they should focus on. So move, move, from, move away from the focus of quantitative sufficiency to productivity and quality. So that's sort of one. The second is on the uh, processing side, can government incentive higher innovation? There's a lot of good institutions in India. It could be NDRI, it could be the, the, the food science uh, uh, functions in, in Mysore, there's a good food science lab. 
can those uh, entities partner with these private uh, organizations to innovate and come out with better products as i said in japan caramelized milk products are pretty milk puddings are very popular why isn't it that india we have still gone that that's one example there are hundreds of such you know examples so that consumers get better access to good products so can government support innovations in that sector can government also sort of push for uh, you know traceability um, when you buy your milk do you know where it comes from how it was how the milk was produced was it actually tested for antibiotics is it actually cow milk or buffalo milk all this are solvable through technology today if the government can sort of nudge the industry to implement uh, a traceability especially dynamic traceability that will be a big uh, you know upside for our consumers even in europe uh, they're just thinking about it now uh, there is static traceability but dynamic traceability needs a lot of tech they're thinking about it now but india can always leapfrog and directly go into that realm you know right away so the consumers benefit they're able to the more discerning consumers get access to more data is it antibiotic free is it a2 is it buffalo is it cow and all of that you know data sort of you know, uh, you know comes through so that's one on the demand side on the supply side um, farmers today still don't get paid digitally for every drop of milk they pour how do we ensure that the payments are happening directly to the farmers and make sure that the intermediaries get their due but the intermediaries uh, should not be manipulating the system right to make this happen what we need to do is ensure that the grading pricing and payment systems has to be extremely transparent has to be digital so that farmers get um, paid directly from the market off takers like a hatson nestle mumark amul and others the intermediaries get their due for the work they're doing but do not get an opportunity to manipulate the flow of money into the you know farmers account this ensures that the farmers get transparent access to more capital for the good quality produce that they bring to the table farmer get access to their money on time they don't have to run period and post to get their own money and of course they don't get caught in the um, in the negative cycle of you know money lending and you know, all of that right so this is how the things that come to my mind where you know government can you know focus some of them are demand side where consumers dynamic traceability and all that some of them are supply side which is to do with uh, making sure the farmers get transparent access to money get transparent access to uh, on time you know payments without the intermediaries coming into picture then finally the broader uh, you know point about the cooperatives it's just not the cooperatives who should leverage the government schemes the private sector also can leverage the government schemes so this broadly are you know what i think the policy makers the government can focus on if we dig deeper there are several nitty gritties but at a broad level this is what i think we should be focusing on